Welcome to the Perfect Life Awakening Show, hosted by Royce Morales. Royce has been a transformational facilitator, teaching groundbreaking, spiritually-based courses for more than four decades. She is the author of three books about her teachings. Join Royce as she takes you on a journey into how to live your best life and find your true purpose through discovering the origins of subconscious, disempowering notions, and releasing them. She talks with experts and inspiring people just like you who learned to trust their intuitive inner wisdom, which led to life-changing shifts. Today, her guests live an empowered existence and are helping change the world to a higher consciousness place based on truth and love. You deserve to awaken to, align with, and embody your true self and live a life filled with love. Transform yourself from triggered to empowered and create your perfect life. Here is your host, Royce Morales. Hello, welcome to my show. I'm so glad you're here. Wow, today is really exciting. I'm going to be talking to somebody who all of you conscious entrepreneurs, and I can never say that word, all of you conscious business people or conscious people in general, will get so much value from because he has some very interesting techniques. And I thought I I knew all these techniques, but apparently not. So as you probably know, being on a spiritual or entrepreneurial path, you've got a lot of fears to break through. Um, recognizing that you're the one that stands in your way is probably the biggest obstacle. And I know in my life, that was the hardest one to overcome. It really was. And I've been in several different kinds of businesses. So getting past those internal blocks can shift everything. So Dr. Noah St. John, who my my wonderful guest is today, he's known as the father of affirmations, not affirmations, affirmations. And if any of you have tried affirmations, like I have, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, Sometimes they're more frustrating than anything else. So he focuses on how to shift your mindset about money, and I'm assuming other things besides money, so that you can win your life back and so that you can thrive and be successful. And he's going to discuss the primary reason so many people get stuck in what he refers to as head trash. Um, I have other names for it, but I like that one too. He's the author of 24 books, and his new book is called The Seven Figure Expert. The Ultimate Guide to a Life of More Impact, Influence, and Financial Freedom. So welcome, Dr. Noah. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Royce. It's great to be here with you today. Thank you. So first of all, tell us how you got started in this. I'm sure there's personal stories that led you to this. There always seems to be. But how did you get started doing this? Well, Uh, To give you the short answer, um, I grew up poor in a rich neighborhood. Now, I know that's a total cliche, but it's totally true. I grew up in this little town called Kennebunkport, Maine, which is one of the wealthiest communities in New England. But my family was dirt poor. And I mean that literally because we lived at the bottom of a dirt road in a drafty, unfinished house that my parents ended up losing to foreclosure when I was just 15 years old. So from a very young age, I was exposed to the gap, the chasm between the haves and the have-nots. The haves is everyone else in the community, and the have-nots is my family. And I hated being poor. I just hated it. You know, you hear there's there's motivational speakers, they'll get on stage and they'll say things like, well, you know, we were poor, but we were happy. We didn't know we were poor. Well, in my family, we freaking knew we were poor (laughs) because my mother, bless her heart, reminded us every day that we're poor and miserable. So no, it wasn't happy, it sucked. And so I just, I hated, that life of poverty and fear, lack, not enoughness. That's what I grew up with. But I saw that right down the street, there's great wealth and abundance. So I said, how the heck do I get from here to there? And of course, there was no one to help me. You know, there's no internet back then. So I did the only thing I could think of to do, which is I went to the library and I read every book in the self-help section. I just immersed myself in all of that, you know, the classical, the classics of self-help, like Stephen Covey, Napoleon Hill, Dale Carnegie, and, and all those people. And so I really, really tried to make it work. I worked really, really hard, but I could never seem to get it to work. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of 25, I ended up, I was broke. My girlfriend had just left me. It was like a country song, you know, but it was really true. (laughs) And so I honestly, I said, 
I don't really want to be here anymore. So I decided to commit suicide. I decided to take my own life. Wow. Now, at the very last moment, my life was spared. I talk about that story in, in my books and my coaching programs. But anyways, I said, I've got to figure out what I'm doing here on planet Earth. Why am I here? What is my purpose? You know, these questions that people have been asking for centuries, right? And so, but I didn't know how to answer that question, that essential question of why am I here? And so I went back to the library and this time I read every book in the spiritual section. I just went to the spiritual section, read every book there. And, you know, now fast forward five years after that, five years later, 1997, I had these epiphanies. And I realized after all these years and years of studying and implementing and really trying to make it work, I had these epiphanies and I realized exactly what was missing in all those books and all that literature and all those teachings that I'd spent all that time and money learning. And so I said, oh my gosh, this is my purpose. This is why I'm here. This is why I'm here on earth. And so I said, well, I've got to write a book, you know, because I've been reading all these books and it just wasn't in there. The answer wasn't there. And so I said, well, I guess I got to write my book. So I did. I wrote my first book. It was called Permission to Succeed. And it was subsequently published by the Chicken Soup for the Soul publisher. And now 24 mm -hmm. books later, you can see some of my books back here. Uh, 24 books, as you mentioned, you know, um, my books are published in 18 languages around the world. Um, and, you know, we've helped our, our coaching clients, whether it's one on one or group coaching to add over three billion dollars in new revenues. And wow. even more importantly, we've helped people to win their lives back, you know, to, to really get that sense of happiness and fulfillment uh, and empowerment that that was just missing for them before. So. Really, that's that's how I got here. It happened really very organically. And, you know, that's what I've been able to do for over 25 years now. Wow. Well, I can't wait for you to get into more details. But my mind is just hung up on the fact that you said your your attempted suicide didn't happen. What happened with that? I'm just so curious. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and again, I, I do share the story in my books. But um, I, I, I just I woke up and I said I, I was looking at the next 40 years of my life. And at that time, I was working at, you know, I call them survival jobs because that's all I was doing was just barely surviving, you know, barely paying my bills. You know, my rent was late uh, all the time. And luckily, I had a really nice landlord who, you know, <laughs> let me be late. But uh, you know, I was like, I just looking at the next 40 years going, I don't want to be here. This, this sucks. This is not what I had dreamed of for my life or what I envisioned. And so now this was before the Internet. This was 1992. So there really wasn't any Internet back then. And I just remembered hearing or reading something somewhere or sitting on TV, whatever, that if you put your car in a garage and you let the exhaust run and shut the door, you would asphyxiate yourself and die. So I said, well, that sounds good to me because, you know, I don't have a gun. I don't want, you know, blood everywhere. So let's just do that. It was just one problem. I was living in this little apartment and all we had was open auto bay. So I didn't have a garage. <laughs> So I'm like, okay. So I said, I'm, I know what I'm going to do. And I got in my car and I just drove around. I was living in North Hollywood, California at the time. So I just drove around North Hollywood and Van Nuys, that area in the, in the valley, in San Fernando Valley. Some of your listeners may be familiar with that area. But anyway, that's where I was living at the time. And I said, I am going to find a garage that is open and I can pull my car in and then close the door behind me. And that would be that. Now, you would think, well, that's impossible. That's never going to happen. But amazingly, it did happen. I actually found, believe it or not, this is a true story, that, you know, a garage that was just sitting there open. The door was open. And I was about to pull my car in and then shut the door behind me. And, and you know, that would be that. And it was at that moment that I saw something in that garage that saved my life. And what it was was a child's bicycle. Oh. In the corner of the garage was a child's bicycle. Now, I knew it was a child's bicycle because it had those white handlebars, you know, with the little things on the end. I, I used to have something like that when I was a kid. And when I saw that child's bicycle, I immediately in my mind, I pictured this family that was, you know, living there at this home. And I just saw this image of, you know, a, a mother and a father and, and a kid. And maybe there's you know more than one child and, you know, coming home to my dead body. And just that it devastated them and it was traumatic. And in that instant, in that moment, I literally said, Noah, you can't do this. You don't know these people. These are strangers. And of course, I, you know, I'll never know who it was. 
or who, you know, whose home it was or what, whatever it was. But I realized in that moment, you can't do this. You can't do this to these people. That That's not fair to these people. You can't do that. And so I just drove, back, drove away, drove back home. And I said, okay, well, I guess that's that. And so that was what led me to that spiritual search that I talked about. Mm-hmm. A moment ago. So that's yeah. really what saved my life. Wow. That sounds uh, pretty spiritual on its yeah. own. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. And I did. I said, you know, it's you can't do this. You can't do this to these people. It's one thing if you do it in your own home. Right. You know, but I didn't have that. So I was like that, you know, just all of that confluence of events that happened. I said, OK, OK, you know, and I I said, OK, all right, fine. I'll I'll, I'll be here. I'll stay here. I don't want to be here, but I'll stay and I'll figure it out. And fortunately, yeah. I was able to do that. Yeah. Wow. That's an amazing story. I'm glad I asked. No, I'm glad so, you <laughs> Okay. So tell us about your what you discovered. Tell us about your techniques and just tell, yeah. tell everything. Absolutely. Sure. Well, gosh, I mean, there's a lot to tell, but um, yeah. a couple of things that, you know, uh, that we can talk about. And and what one of the things that I realized was missing, right? I talked about, you know, I studied and, you know, was reading and consuming all these books for years and years and years. I mean, decades, really. And one of the things that I felt was really missing in those 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 books and trainings that I was taking was the balance between um, what I like to call inner game and outer game. You know, the inner game is everything that happens between your ears. Now, you can't see the inner game directly. That's what's fascinating about it. You can't see the inner game directly. However, it's affecting everything that you're doing. It affects your whole life. Right. So like as a keynote speaker, you know, uh, we were talking about this off the air. You know, I, I'm, I'm a keynote speaker and I get to speak virtually and in person, you know, for companies, organizations, teams all around the world. And one of the things I like to do with my audience members, you know, as a keynote speaker is I'll say, OK, what is one area of your life where your beliefs don't affect you? And then people go. Um, uh, <laughs> and I go, exactly. There's yeah. no place your beliefs don't affect you. Right. Your beliefs affect your health. Right. Your 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 stress level, your mental and emotional well-being, your spiritual self. Right. And and everything about your your health, your mental health, emotional health, physical, health, everything. Then your wealth. Right. The, your beliefs affect your money, your finances, your business, your career, whether you get that promotion or not, whether you start a business or whether it grows or dies. You know, all of that is inner game. And, you know, it affects your relationships, right? Your personal relationships, your your intimate relationships, your social life, everything. And yet the funny thing is you can't see a belief. Your beliefs affect everything, but you can never see a belief. You can only see the effects of a belief, right? And then also what's interesting is that you can be doing really well in one area of your life, but maybe you're stuck or struggling in another area, right? For example... Maybe your health is really good, but you're not making the money you want or vice versa, right? Maybe you're making lots of money, you know, but your health is suffering or your relationships are suffering or your family life is suffering. You see what I mean? So it's not just cookie cutter, one size fits all. It's very customized and personalized to each individual person. That's how, you know, how we work at my company, successclinic.com. It's very personalized, individualized approach because you can't, you know, everybody's different, right? Right. So that's the inner game. But then you also have the outer game, right? Now, the outer game is everything you can see directly, right? That's right in front of your face, right? It's uh, the systems and strategies that you have. For example, as as entrepreneurs, right, you mentioned that, you know, I, I coach on, uh, co- conscious entrepreneurs. That's, you know, one of the groups of people I love working with, you know, chiropractors and people in network marketing and real estate, and, you know, wealth managers, all the different kinds of people. So you have to have the outer game going as well. But here's what's fascinating is that it's only when you master the inner game and the outer game that you really have the phenomenon called success. Now, I I just want to give an example of that, if I may, a a real life example. So I was speaking at a seminar in Los Angeles a few years ago to about a thousand entrepreneurs, right? These are, you know, conscious entrepreneurs. These are successful people. They're making multiple six figures, seven figures, even eight figures in many cases, right? So successful group of people, right? So I was speaking about, you know, talking about what I do, you know, and how I help people 
you know, make more money and win their lives back. And so anyway, I just finished speaking and I was walking off the stage and a man came up to me out of the audience and he said, Noah, you are the coach I've been looking for. I want you to coach me. Now, I, I didn't know this man from Adam. Ironically, his name was Adam. <laughs> True story. All right. And I said, okay, what's going on? He said, well, Noah, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I own this company. And we've been at seven figures for the last four years. You know, and we have been stuck. We've just been, and, and I, I, you know, in my talk, I, call, I talk about the income ceiling. Right. I call it the income ceiling syndrome, like which is what many, many people, you know, millions of entrepreneurs are facing right now, which is they just keep hitting a ceiling. Right. No matter how much they how hard they tr work, how hard they try, how much they try, you know, going to all the seminars and everything like that. They just keep still hitting that ceiling and they they can't bust through. They can't break through that ceiling. So he said, that's me right now. His ceiling was at seven figures, which is pretty great. Right. But he couldn't break through that ceiling and it had been four years and he couldn't break through. And he had tried everything. He'd spent all this money on all these other marketing guys and gurus and things like that. He said, no, I just can't break through that saying. He said, as soon as I heard you speak, he said, I knew just something inside me said, I knew that you were the coach I've been looking for. So he, he basically hired me right on the spot. That's why I love working with high achievers, right? They make decisions quickly and firmly. They don't billy belly. They don't mess around. So he hired me. I, I coached him one-on-one -on -one for about 18 months. And in that 18 months, his company went from being stuck at seven figures for the previous four years to over 20 million in sales, wow. literally and a 600% increase in less than 18 months. Now, what's fascinating about that story is that 95% of what I coached him on was inner game. Yeah. Right. He'd been spending all this time, money and effort on all this outer game stuff. And Hey, he'd gotten the seven figures just by doing that. So, Hey, that's great. Right. I mean, most people would be thrilled. He was like, well, wait a minute, I can do more, you know, and I want more and I want to be able to spend more time with my family. You know, he's working all the time and all this and that. And as a result of helping him master his inner game, he was not only able to increase by over 600 percent. He was also able to spend more time with his family, take more vacations and all the things that we really want as conscious entrepreneurs. So that is an example of how inner game and outer game, once you put them together, boy, you can really get amazing results. Yeah. Wow. So tell us more about the inner game. That that's very intriguing, since you know that's what I do with people as well. I'd, I'd be here very curious to hear what you do in that. Yes, absolutely. So you know, uh, there's a heck of a lot to it, of course, right? And yeah. so, but one of the things that I help people with is number one, just understanding that the inner game is there, right? Because you know, going back to Adam as an example, most people. You know, if you're in business, you, you're spending tons of time, money and effort on outer game stuff, funnels, offers, traffic, sales, conversions. And all of these things are very important, you know, in business. Right. And in your, let's say you have a job, right? You, you're working at your job and you're doing all these things that you're being asked to do. And, you know, that's all very important. So just the fact that we talk about the inner game for many people is just a big aha moment. It's a big light bulb. Like. You mean I have to look at my beliefs? Like my beliefs might be affecting my life. I go, I don't know. What do you think? And they're like, oh yeah, I guess I never thought of that. Yeah. You know. So it's kind of like a light bulb. In fact, it's funny. Um, many years ago, one of my one of my very first coaching clients, because you know, like I said, I do one on one coaching and group coaching. One of my very first coaching clients said to me, you know, Noah, as we're doing this inner game work. It's like you turned a light on in a room that's been dark my whole life. And as I was listening to him, I said, you know what? That's exactly what it is. Because think about it. For, for everybody listening to this program and if you're you know, watching, um, I want you to imagine that you know, you're, you're in your home right now. And somebody came in and shut off all the lights, pulled the drapes, and it was totally dark and you couldn't see anything. It was just completely dark. And then they say to you, all right, now I want you to rearrange the furniture in your home. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to say, well, but I can't see. I, I mean, OK, I, I can't see. And, and then they say, well, come on, get motivated. Set your goals. Come on, think positive. You can do it. You see what they're doing? <laughs> this is what all these coaches are doing. They're, they're saying these things. Now, yeah. that's not wrong, right? It's not wrong to be motivated. It's not wrong to set your goals. But you can't see, <laughs> right? right? And right. so what do you do? You're like, all right, I'll try it. You know, and you're 
going around and boop, ow, you hit your head, you know, you hit your shin on the coffee table and your butt, ah, oh, my toe, you know, and you hit on the on the chair and you, oh, the cat, ah, oh, I didn't see the cat. You, know? <laughs> you can't see, right? So what I do that's different is I go, <clears throat> click, you know, and I go, oh, yeah, oh, there it is. There's the couch, there's the cat, you know. And so that's really what working with inner game is like. You know, it, it really is turning the light on. And, and the reason for that, or one of the reasons, is because of the uh, the iceberg principle of human behavior, all right? So as I'm sure most most of your listeners are aware, you know, the human mind, and frankly, the human being is really like an iceberg, right? Meaning about 5% of our thoughts, behaviors, and actions are uh, visible above the surface, right? Just like the top part of the iceberg, right? That's the part you can see. It's above the surface of consciousness. Well, the vast 95% is below, it's hidden below the surface that's the subconscious or unconscious right well you know imagine if you had you know a, a battle right or 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 you know a game right and you had five people going up against 95 people who do you think is going to win that battle who do you think is going to win that game yeah right hello the 95 is going to win but only every time right and so that's why so many people going back to my example you know when they're Working up here in, in the, the conscious, which is where the outer game is, by the way. The outer game is all up here, right? So they're like, hey, what's going on, man? We got to do these uh, sales pages. We got to do these. Po yes, you do. But hello, you got this 95 down here that you haven't even looked at, right? And as I always tell my clients, um, it wasn't the part of the iceberg that they could see that sunk the Titanic. It was the part that they didn't see that sunk the Titanic. And that's what's sinking most of us too, right? It's the part that you don't see. So that's one of the reasons why that the inner game, you, you know, just to be aware of it is really the very, the first thing that we need to do because transformation can't happen without awareness. That is true. So I would love for you to explain how you get people in touch with all that furniture they're trying to move, but let, we need to take a little bit of a break. Yep. So we'll be right back. And I'm talking to Dr. Noah St. John, and he's talking about all kinds of success and how to get there and remove those subconscious obstacles. We'll be right back. Om Times TV. Do you crave joy, but feel stuck? Do you go through life feeling constantly triggered and frustrated? Fear is likely the culprit, and subconscious fear is likely sabotaging you. Perfect Life Awakening is a time-tested, spiritually-based approach to inner transformation created by Royce Morales. For over 40 years, she has helped people get to the origins of subconscious fears and ultimately help them find their true purpose and a life full of joy. Sign up for Perfect Life Awakening today at RoyceMorales.com. You deserve to go from triggered to empowered, shifting your life with Perfect Life Awakening. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times Magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? 
support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. I'm talking to Dr. Noah St. John, and he's talking about success and all that stuff, those beliefs <laughs> that get in the way. And you were just about ready to tell us what, what are some of the techniques that you use to help people to get in touch with that subconscious stuff? Yes, absolutely. Um, and just before I forget, I do want to um, mention that uh, the book that we're talking about, you know, because I've written the 24 books, but um, we do have a book that's available for free for your listeners. Um, and that's called The Seven Figure Expert. And all you have to do if you go to sevenfigureexpertbook.com, uh, the book is free. Um, we just ask you to cover shipping. Um, so here's, here's what it looks like. This is the book here. Anyway, it's called The Seven Figure Expert, Your Ultimate Guide to a Life of More I Impact, Influence, and Financial Freedom. So again, the site is sevenfigureexpertbook.com. Easy to remember, sevenfigureexpertbook.com. Dot com. The book is free. We just ask you to cover the shipping. So is seven what, is in the number or written yeah, down? Either one is either one actually goes, but uh, okay. number seven or the word seven, either one, they both work. So right. yes, I'm figure expert book.com. So one of the techniques that I've been uh, teaching for a long time and one of the things that I'm known for, and you actually mentioned this at the top of the show, is I'm known as the father of affirmations. Now, for the folks who aren't familiar with that, um, I'm not saying the word wrong. I'm saying a new word. So this is one of my books uh, from Hay House. It's called The Book of Affirmation. So it's called A-F-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S, Affirmations. If you, and you, by the way, you can go to affirmations.com and learn more about my affirmations method. But this is one of the things that people absolutely love because it is so fast and easy and incredibly effective and powerful. So everybody listening to this program, I'm sure, knows what an affirmation is, right? The the old way. And that's because every guru, every every self-help author, you know, talks about you use this affirmations, right? It's a statement of something that you want to be true. Right. And you know, we've all heard this a million times, right? And they, they say, well, you know, you say your affirmations and write them down and use a lot of emotion and you know, post them on your wall and your mirror, and you know, then you'll get what you want, right? And, you know, hey, for lots of people, the affirmations method, the old way, you know, really worked fine. But for millions of us, it really didn't work at all. It was very frustrating. <laughs> right? you, you, you alluded to that earlier. <clears throat> yeah. Right? And so that's what happened for me, too. You know, I like I talked about earlier, you know, I was reading all these books. Every book says the same thing. You know, say the statement. So, you know, I had these. Uh, post-it notes all over my wall, you know, I'm happy, I'm rich, I'm successful. And meanwhile, the reality was, no, I'm broke, unhappy, and miserable. <laughs> you know, so it's like you miss the one way, the one technique that is guaranteed, and that's to tattoo it on your arm. <laughs> right. I did miss that one, thank God. I'm kidding. Uh, yes, no, I know. I I'm glad I missed that. Uh anyways, yeah. so you know, I and you know, of course. Millions of people feel the same way, right? But no one was talking about this before I started talking about this. And and in fact, I had the, I talked about my epiphanies. This is one of them. And it happened April 1997. And I was in the shower, and I call it the shower that changed everything. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because I bet everybody listening to this program has had that aha moment in the shower or the bathtub, yeah. right? I mean, this is this goes back to the ancient Greeks, right? It's yes. that eureka moment. And so it's very, you know, it's been it's been around for centuries, right? It's, it's a, it's a long history. And so for me, it was the shower that changed everything. So I was thinking about this, you know, this very topic of what I'm talking about, right? How come I've been using these affirmations, doing everything they told me to do, and I'm not getting anything. I'm not getting any results. What the heck is going on around here? And it's so funny because today, you know, nowadays when, when, you know, as a speaker, one of the things I like to do with my audience members is I'll say, all right, everybody, um, everybody say an affirmation, just like we were taught, right? Everybody knows what that is. And I say, okay, everybody say, I am rich, right? A classic affirmation, right? And so everybody, all right, say, I am, and everybody goes, I am rich. You know what happens next? Everybody starts laughing, <laughs> right? Just like that, right? And I go, well, what yeah. are you laughing at? They say, well, I'm not rich. And I say, but you just said you were. And they go, yeah, but I don't believe it. Aha, isn't that the problem with the old method, right? We say these 
positive statements. We write them down, but 90% of the time, we just don't believe it, right? And in fact, a study was done on this very topic. A scientific study was done. Now, I, I didn't know about this back then, but I you know, did a lot of research in the meantime. And a scientific study was actually done on this very topic of affirmations. And they found that, believe it or not, three out of four people, 75% of people who use the old affirmation method actually end up more frustrated than before. Yes. Three out of four, 75%. So imagine if you had a cell phone that didn't work three out of the four times you want to use it. You'd probably get a new phone, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I did. I invented a new phone for your mom, <laughs> <laughs> which is my affirmations mm. method. All right. So going back to my shower, right? The shower that changed everything. So I was in the shower the, and I was thinking about this, right? I'm going, oh, my God, what is going on here? What aren't they telling us? And I said, okay, well, you know, they told us, say these statements, repeat them, blah, 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 blah. And then I said, okay, now, what are we talking about here? We're talking about beliefs, right? We're talking about changing our beliefs, right? Because if you want to change your life, we've got to change our beliefs, right? And I, I mean, everything I've been talking about, right, with your inner game and so forth, right? So I knew that part was true. I said, okay, but what's a belief? And then I said, well, a belief is just the thought. And then I said, okay, well, what is thought? What is human thought? And then more I thought about that question, I realized human thought is the process of asking and searching for answers to questions. That's what thought is. Could because I'll give, I mean, I'll prove it to you. I'll show you an example. Imagine if I were to ask you right now, why is the sky blue? Why is the sky blue? Now, do you know what just happened in your brain? For everybody listening to this program, everybody listening to the sound of my voice right now, I said, why is the sky blue? Your brain instantly went to search for the answer. Even if you don't know the answer, you're searching right now. Your brain's going, why is the sky blue? That's a good, and you're probably Googling it. Why is the sky blue? <laughs> you're proving my point right now. You're literally proving my point because you're searching for the answer. And so I said, that is how human thought works. That is human thought, asking and searching for answers to questions. So I said, well, wait a second. Now, wait a minute. If human thought is the process of asking and searching for answers to questions, why are we going around making statements we don't believe? Why don't we just cut out the middleman? And I said, hmm, well, what would that look like? By the way, did you notice these are all questions, yes. including that one? Yes. <laughs> all right. So, mm -hmm, again, proving my point. So I said, well, let's see. What would that look like? All right. So we've got this statement, which is what everybody tells you to do. We've heard this a million, billion times. You got the statement, I am rich, to which your brain says, yeah, right. Right. In, in my books and my trainings, I actually call it the yeah, right response because your brain literally goes, <laughs> yeah, right. So I said, OK, if that's the statement, then what would the question be? And then I said, why am I so rich? Why am I so rich? Now, when you ask that question, what immediately starts to happen in your brain? You start to search for the answer. Mm -hmm. Right. And your brain's going, why am I so rich? Well, because, and you see what you do? You literally just answer the question. You know, you might say, you know, people, and you know, this is what people have said to me over the years. Well, because, you know, I have a home, because I have food, because I have a family, because I'm, you know, healthy, whatever it might be, right? And you're searching for the answer. Now, what I'm teaching is about the law of sowing and reaping. As you sow, so shall you reap. This is an ancient law. It's been taught for centuries. And yet, do you know what most people are doing? Sowing lousy thought seeds. Why am I so stupid? Why am I so fat? Why can't I lose weight? Why isn't my business growing? Why can't I get more customers? Why is there more month left at the end of the money? Hmm. When you ask lousy questions, what do you get? You get lousy answers, right? Yes. And yes. that creates lousy results, which leads to a lousy life. And that's what I was living. I said, holy cow, wait a second. What if instead of asking lousy questions that lead to lousy answers, create lousy results, create a lousy life? What if we were to just flip the whole thing on its head? Start asking empowering questions that lead to phenomenal answers, create amazing results, and thereby create a wonderful life. And as I was standing there in the shower, April 1997, I said, holy cow, I think I just invented something. 
<laughs> and so I had to give it a name, and the name that I gave it was what I mentioned a moment ago, Afformations, A-F-F. Again, you can research this. Google this, A-F-F-O-R-M-A-T-O-N-S, Afformations. You go to Afformations.com. By the way, and many people ask me this, so I'll just mention this. People ask me all the time, Noah, how did you come up with the word Afformations? Where did that word come from? Now, in high school, one of my favorite subjects was Latin. Right? I just love Latin. That's how you know I'm a I'm a I'm a nerd. I'm not a geek. I'm a nerd. There's a difference. <laughs> Anyways, there's a big difference between the two. Yes, big difference. Big difference. So I'm a nerd. Anyways, and by the way, this was long before it's cool to be a nerd. Now it's cool to be a nerd. Before I was long, I was not cool back then. But anyways, I still I love Latin. So let in uh, the word affirmation, right? The the word we've heard a million billion times. The word we you know that's been shoved down our throats. That word comes from the Latin word for mare which means to make firm. Now, the word affirmations that I invented, right? And by the way, it's perfectly legitimate to invent a new word, right? When you have a new way of looking at the universe or a new technology, isn't it true we often need a new word, oh, yeah. right? So, for example, if I would have said the word to you, internet, back in 1982, you would have gone, what are you talking about? What? Because it didn't exist, right? It was a technology that didn't... So if I said the word, it didn't have any context, no meaning. If I had said the word Google... In, you know, 1979, no meaning, no context, right? But now these are words, of course, we use every single day because now there's meaning and context, a new technology, a new word because of new context. Well, what I invented 27 years ago now is a new technology of the mind, a new technology of the mind. And so affirmations comes from the Latin word formare, which means to form, to form or give shape to. So what I often ask my audience members or my coaching clients is, what if you are making something firm, but it's in the wrong form? That means you formed a life you didn't even want. Why am I so stupid? Why am I so fat? Why isn't my business growing? Why don't I have any money? You formed it, not on purpose. Nobody does this on purpose, but it doesn't matter. Because of the law of sowing and reaping, as you sow, so shall you reap. You sow lousy seeds, you get lousy results. So now using my affirmations method, and this is the foundational habit that I teach my clients to change their inner game, right? That's, you ask me, you know, what are some of these techniques? And Freedom says, brilliant. Well, thank you. I, that's <laughs> very kind. Um, anyway, it, this is the foundational, my affirmations method is the foundational I call it the power habits of unconsciously successful people. That is the, the name of my, the totality of my teaching. It's called the power habits of unconsciously successful people. Now that's a mouthful, I know, but let me just break it down. It's very simple. Now we humans, whenever we want to master a new habit or a new skill, we always go through four stages of competency. Now those four stages are unconscious, Incompetence. That's the first stage. That means you don't know you don't know. The second stage is conscious incompetence. That means you know you don't know. The third stage is conscious competence, which is you know you know. And then the final stage is unconscious competence, which is you do without thinking. So it's like driving a car, right? That's the example I always use in my keynote presentations or with my clients. Everybody, I'm sure, listening to this program, certainly the majority knows how to drive a car right now, right? But did you realize, or did you know that you had to go through those four stages to learn this new skill? The first stage is you didn't know, you didn't know how to drive a car. Nobody comes out of the womb and says, hey, where's my car? <laughs> right? You don't know, you don't know. Then you get to a certain age and you're like, hmm, I wanna get away from my parents. But I all I have is this bicycle and I can't get far enough away from my parents on this bicycle, gosh darn it. Oh man, I need a car. Wait a minute. I don't know how to drive a car. Oh man. Right. So now you realize, now you know, you know that you don't know. You know, you know, you don't know. So that's conscious incompetence. I know, I don't know. Then you get to the third stage, which is you learn how to drive a car, right? You get to, you know, say 16, 17, whatever years old, and you're like learning how to drive. I don't know. You know, I remember learning how to drive a car back then, you know, in my teens. And, you know, in my day, 
we had to we had a car that was you know it was a buick that was about you know the length of a of a city block you know it was one of those, remember those big buicks back then or you know big cars it's like ah you know nowadays it's a, little, you know, a lot easier nowadays you yeah anyways but you know we had to learn and it was really hard if you can remember and you know i know it might be far back but if you think about that there's a there's so many stimuli coming at you when you're driving a car it, there's a heck of a lot going on in there and if we would have actually seen your brain on, you know, you know, like a CT scan or something, we would have seen like, it's going nuts because, ah, right. But then guess what? You, you know, you had practice, you learned, you, you got better at it. And now today for most folks listening to this program, listening to my voice, you do it without thinking, right? You are literally unconsciously competent at this skill, which used to be really hard. Well, what I've realized, you know, over the course of a lifetime of studying highly successful people in human behavior, I've realized that highly successful people, I call them the naturals of success, they are unconsciously competent at allowing themselves to succeed. That means they're not holding themselves back. That means they don't have, as I call it, head trash. They don't, they're not, you know, holding themselves back from success. In fact, they listen to this and go, what are you talking about? And I go, exactly. No kidding. So the fact of the matter is because the naturals are unconsciously competent at allowing themselves to succeed, number one, how could they possibly teach you how to let yourself succeed? Because if you've never done something, how could you possibly teach someone else how to do it? You can't, right? So the naturals are unconsciously competent at allowing themselves to succeed. Therefore, how could they possibly teach you how to stop stopping yourself from success? The answer is they couldn't. And so that's why, you know, going back to my example, like Adam, you know, he'd been giving lots of money to all these highly successful, you know, in this case, marketing, you know, guys, marketing gurus who were already successful. And that's great. That's wonderful. But that wasn't his problem. You see what I mean? His yeah. problem was no one had shown him how to stop stopping himself from the level of success he's capable of. So that's why we were able to increase his company by 600%. And I mean, I have a million stories like that. You see what I'm saying? And that's what makes this so exciting is that it's not about working harder. It's not even about working smarter. It's about stopping, stopping yourself. It's about you stop stopping yourself. Many years ago, I was doing a, a workshop with Neil Donald Walsh, the author of Conversations with God. And he said, no, do you know what you teach people? I said, well, I mean, I think I know, but what, what are you going to tell me? You know, you're Neil Donald Walsh. I'm going to listen to you. He said, you teach people how to stop stopping themselves from success. I go, that's true. You're right. So he said, that should be the title of your book. Stop stopping yourself. I never did that, but <laughs> he's right. And so anyway, that's what I do. So where does the subconscious belief system come in from all this? Well, that, as I talked about earlier with the iceberg principle. Yes. And so it's different for every person. Right. So there are uh, just to give an example, there are lots and lots and lots of negative beliefs floating around out there about money, success, wealth and particularly wealthy people. Right. And I mean, we've all heard the quotes, you know, uh, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the gates of heaven. That quote is often used, right. you know, in in church, uh, you know, churches or religious groups, et cetera. Right. So that's just one example. And so, in other words, the the and Jung, of course, talked about the collective unconscious. So they're just ideas that are just floating around out there. We don't know who did it or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, wealthy people must be greedy, mean, selfish, you know. And so when the person is thinking about, gee, I really want to be wealthy and successful they immediately in their mind equate that to well i got to be greedy mean and selfish now again no this is not a conscious thought that's not a conscious thought what i just said but see when i talk about it you know in my in my books and in my coaching my trainings people go huh you're right i was thinking that i didn't even know i was doing that i didn't know i was thinking that see unconscious right i'll give you an ex a perfect example of what i'm talking about now my wife and i when uh, we, we bought a house, uh, our first our first house together, 
And we moved into a nice neighborhood, you know, just what I would call an upper middle class neighborhood, you know. And we bought the house. It was in 2011. And so, you know, we moved in and basically, we, you know, we moved in and it was nice. I mean, our neighbors were fine and, you know, nothing really, no, no big deal, right? And no, nobody made any fuss and we just moved in and there you go. Now, 10 years later, in 2021, we decided to move into this house where, where I'm right now, which is a 6,000 square foot mansion on a hill in the nicest neighborhood, you know, in this part of the country in Northeast Ohio where we live. So I, I got us the nicest house in the nicest neighborhood. When we moved in, do you know what happened? We had our neighbors from all over, you know, all beautiful homes that are around here. They all came in with cookies and cake and flowers. And, hey, welcome to the neighborhood. And we're so glad you're here. I'm like, wow, rich people are nice. <laughs> you know, I tell that story on purpose because I want people to go, hey, you know, all these things you see on TV and the media, you know, rich, you know, and scam artists. And that. I'm like, oh, now, of course, there is that. Of course, we have that. But guess what? There's poor people who are jerks, too. You know, there's rich jerks and poor jerks. It doesn't matter. Right. And so what's funny about that is, as I always say, money doesn't change anything. It reveals everything. Money doesn't change anything. It reveals everything. So in other words, if you are a jerk who has no money and then you get more money, you're going to be a rich <laughs> jerk, only jerkier than you were. <laughs> right. And if you're a really nice person, if you're a spiritual person, a giving person, which I know everybody listening to this program is, and you get money, you're just going to be nicer. You're going to be able to give to more charities, give to more churches, foundations, whatever it is. Maybe start your own, you know, nonprofit. So that's how money works. People will say, oh, money changes you. No, it doesn't. It just magnifies what's already there. So all you great, great nice people listening to this, let yourself be wealthy too. And then you can <laughs> help more people. Right. So you're talking about collective unconscious beliefs and beliefs that perhaps the media instills but what about the personal beliefs because I, I i work with people on those sure. and usually it goes down to some kind of a, a false notion that i don't i don't deserve do you deal with that sort of thing in, in your work oh all the time absolutely what i've noticed is that um you know these messages like you were talking about you know i'm not good enough or i don't deserve or whatever you know there's only a few places that that comes from right it's parents grandparents, you know, whatever, the, the, you know, the adults that were there when the child was growing up, right? Then you've got church, you've got, you know, school. And I mean, like, as an example, I grew up Catholic, right? So I grew up in the Catholic church. And what I got out of, you know, the Catholic church was everything I do is wrong. And I'm wrong just for existing. Thanks a lot. You know, it's great. <laughs> so no matter what you do, you're a sinner. And good luck. I'm like, really? Okay. Now, did that contribute to my deciding to commit suicide? I do believe it did. Yeah, I do believe it did. And so, you know, now, is that what everybody feels like who grew up Catholic? I don't know. I mean, I haven't interviewed everyone who grew up Catholic. There's a lot of them. So, you know, but that's what it did for me. You know, so for me, it wasn't very healthy. It was, it was pretty unhealthy, you know, from an inner game belief standpoint, you know, because I didn't want to be a sinner. I did, what did I do? I don't know what I did, but I do wrong. Oh, you existed. Oh, really? That's it? Wow, that kind of stinks, because what am I supposed to do about that, right? And, you know, again, hence, that was my decision, really. So, again, did that did that uh, contribute to that? I believe it did, yeah. And that's very common. You know, I'll just say it's very common that you have something like that. And also, so many times, you know, you have a, a, a teacher, you know, that in, in, let's say, in grade school or something, and that will say to that, that student, you know, oh, you're stupid. You'll never amount to anything. Who do you think you are? You know, or, oh, you know, you have a dream and, oh, what are you doing? You know, they want to be an astronaut or, you know, playing the NFL or the NBA or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, you know, that'll never work. You know, go to college and, you know, study and get good grades and there you go. Go get a job. Okay. So, you know, listen, I know teachers have a really hard job. I get it. But you've got to be aware of that. What you say can really have a, a big effect on people even years or decades later. Yeah. And I've had so many clients who say, yeah, I had a teacher who told me I was dumb and, and I, you know, I couldn't read and I, I couldn't, couldn't write and, and that affected me for years. And it's like, oh man, that is so terrible. You know, and of course, listen, most teachers are great people. These, these things that happen are very rare, but still, you know, they can affect people many years later. So you really got to be careful about that. 
So how do you keep, how do you help people resolve some of those deep beliefs? And I, I find that they go even a lot further back than just parents and teachers. Absolutely. You sure. know, they're absolutely we arrive with a lot of them. So how do you yeah, absolutely. break through those? Well, I'll tell you what, our formations are a great method. Our formations really, really work wonders because th think about this, as I talked about earlier, sowing and reaping, right? Why am I so stupid? There you go. You've been sowing that seed. You've been planting that seed for years you know, 20, 30, 40 years. Why am I so stupid? You know, because, you know, this person told me I was stupid. Okay. Well, do we have to keep believing that? You have to keep sowing that seed? If you keep sowing that seed, you are absolutely going to get that result. I mean, that's sowing and reaping, you know, and that person could be, and you know, in most cases, is, they're long gone. You know, so just, again, remember I was talking about the iceberg, right? They're not, they're not thinking this consciously. They don't wake up in the morning and go, okay, I'm a stupid person. Great. You know, let's go through my day. No, no, they're not thinking that, you know, and as I always say, you know, in my, in my talks or, you know, my presentation, I'll say, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, wow, you know, this looks like a great day. You know what? I think I'm going to hold myself back from success today. <laughs> right. I mean, no one has ever said that because that would be silly because that would be a conscious thought, but nevertheless, millions and millions and millions of people are unknowingly unwittingly holding themselves back from success because of everything that I've been teaching for 25 years. So anyway, that's why, you know, and going back to my point about, you know, the seven figure expert book, that's why we have it for free. Cause I really want people to get this message. You know, I know we only have a few minutes left, so I want people to remember they can get the book for free, the website, sevenfigureexpertbook.com, because, and the reason we have it that way is so that we get this message out to the millions and millions of people who have a great message and maybe holding themselves back from the success they're capable of. So that's why we really want to make this resource available. So you have them state an affirmation mm -hmm. and they notice their beliefs. Mm -hmm. What happens from that? Well, what happens usually is I, I invite, or I, I have them journal about that, you know, just writing about it. And when you're writing, as I'm sure, you know, you know, you bring up things that you never thought of before. You didn't think of them consciously. And as someone is journaling, and by the way, we have, Affirmations journals. You can go on Amazon and you know, just look under my name, Noah St. John, and you can see all my different. We have the affirmations journals and things like that that you can get. And that way, every day, you can be writing down your affirmations and just write about and journal about what comes up for you. Because probably if you've had it buried for a long time, it's going to take a while to get up to the surface. And that's how we can really begin to release those things, those beliefs that are holding you back without your conscious knowledge. But again, remember, it doesn't matter if you're aware of it or not. If it's holding you back, that's the seed you're sowing. So we just got to start planting new seeds and my affirmations method is a great way to do that right away. So what about, and I know this could be a whole, you know, hour talk yes. <laughs> about this, but <clears throat> as you're talking, I'm thinking about spiritual discipline and spiritual philosophy talks about being unattached and not needing externals to make you feel better or to make you feel like you're a worthwhile person. How, do, how does your training or your teaching, how do you address that sort of thing? Well, I look at everything in balance, right? I mean, just like the Buddhists talk about the middle way, okay? And that is, um, I know a lot of spiritual teachers say that and believe it. But what I've noticed is I grew up poor with no money and it sucked. And now that I have money, I'm a heck of a lot happier. Is money the cause of my happiness? No, but it's a contributor to it, definitely. All right. So if you don't have money, it's it's really, really hard, you know, to, to be just be happy. Now, of course, there's lots of people who don't have a lot, what we would consider a lot, who are happy. So does money cause happiness? No. But does it contribute to it? I've found that it does. You know, so that's why I do talk about inner game and outer game. I do want people to have that balance of time, energy, relationships, and money. Because growing up without money, there was nothing good about it. <laughs> At least I didn't like it. Right. You know, so for the people who agree, you know, that's what our system is, is really all about. Okay. Well, we only have a couple more minutes. So what would you like to leave people with? What, what's your big message to end off with? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, my message would be, Give yourself permission to succeed. Don't allow those thoughts in your head to hold yourself back anymore. And again, if you do want to get 
seven figure expert book. I'll just hold it up again. So you see it, you know, seven figure expert book.com. There it is. Seven figure expert book.com. Boom. The book is free. Discover the shipping. We ship anywhere on planet earth, but really um, you don't have to work so hard to, to have the things that you want, but you do have to have a system. If you don't have a system or the right systems in place, it's really going to be about you working, working, working all the time. And I did that and it really wasn't very efficient and I really didn't get very good results. So, you know, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> uh, my, let my pain be your gain. All right. And so uh, really that's, you know, that's what all my teachings are about. I had to spend a lot of money and over 20 years of my life to figure all this stuff out. So my job really now today is to shorten time, to compress time so that people don't have to you know, make the mistakes that I did to really get to the places that they want to go in life. And nothing right. would make me happier than to see, uh, you know, more success stories. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Noah St. John, for being here and for sharing your wisdom and for taking showers that opened <laughs> your consciousness. And if you need to, if you need to be reached, how can people reach you? Yeah, just uh, Google me or just go to NoahStJohn.com. My name, you know, it's right there. You see it. Uh, NoahStJohn.com. But yeah, we've got, you know, like I said, one-on-one -on -one group coaching, books, courses, online trainings, and uh, and keynote presentations as well. So NoahStJohn.com, that's the best way. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for listening and watching. And I will see you in a couple weeks or so. Deserve.